we do um, possum release here. We've released brush tail possums and ring tail possums uh, because we've got quite a bit of scrub in and around our house and we're actually opposite the national park so we've um, we uh, do possum release here. They're usually orphaned possums from injured injured parents or injured mothers and so they get raised to a certain size and then we bring them here and we've got some big uh, aviaries that we put them in till we're pretty sure that they're right and then we release them into the wild and they make homes. There's quite a few that live around here. We actually had one that had babies. I'll put some pictures up for you to look at. And um, they're quite cute. The little ringtails are cute. The brush tails can be a bit a bit more, a bit more, noisy and they're the ones that people say get in their roof and wreck everything. But um, as long as you keep the trees away from your roof, you should be all right. Um, but this is the little water dispenser that we use for our possums. Uh, you buy this part, this is just a juice bottle, um, that's called hoop steel and um, this is just made from scrap wood. So let's get on and I'll show you how to make one of them. The purpose of this video is to show someone how to mount one of these little small animal water feeders in a plastic bottle. It's got a little float, it fills with water and when it's full it pulls that little valve down there, if you can just see that seats, it's got a slight taper and it seats. So that's sealed and that's open. And so the purpose of this video is to show you how to mount this into a plastic bottle. This is quite a good brand, this one. And it comes with a fitting that allows you to screw it into a 20 litre drum so that the water would last a lot longer. Um, I think they have a proprietary rail that these screw into and they also have a rail that these screw into but we don't, I actually don't use that piece and what I've found is this thread here I wasn't sure what it was so I got my little trusty little thread gauge you put it on there and you can just make out that the threads line up so now I know that's 28 threads per inch so if I look at my chart Looking at the outside diameter of that, which is about just under 10 millimetres, so 1 8 BSP thread is 28 TPI and 9.76, I think it is, millimetres. But if you can get hold of a stainless um, 1 8 BSP nut or fitting, that's great. But I'll show you what I do. This is a bit simpler and probably a bit easier for everybody to get their hands on. Just go to the hardware store and get some stainless 10 mil nuts. That's a 10 mil metric thread, so that's 10 by 1.5, which is completely different to this. But when you screw this down on here, it reforms that thread sufficiently that when you screw it up against a cap, it will seal on that O-ring there. So you just start that off. It should start off fairly straight, it's not too bad. You, but you will need a spanner to turn that down. So let's have a look how that's done. I'm going to clamp this in the vise, but so the jaws on the vise don't make a mark on the plastic, I'm just going to get an old piece of cloth, any kind of old piece of cloth will do. Just push that down in there, just gently, just you don't want to crack it, just want to hold it still. There, that's probably plenty. Then you take your 10 mil nut, start it on there as straight as you can, and then just run that down with a spanner. You just got to do it gently, you don't want to force this. almost there. If you take a look under there you can see it's almost all the way down so you just want to run that down until it just snugs against that o-ring because you don't want to crush the o-ring. There, that's pretty good I think maybe a, a smidge more and then once again just gently back that off that that nut will come off easier than it went on because you're not forming the thread now. So there you go, it's not quite as tidy as a machine, as a factory form thread, but I've done this several times and it will work. Now one thing you can do, is just put a tiny little bit of Vaseline on the threads and then run that nut down again. This time when you run it down, 
it's putting almost no load on the plastic and all it's doing is cleaning the plastic threads up. See look at how much easier that's turning. And that's almost, that's all, that's all the way down. So I won't take that any further. So now when I spin that off, those threads should look a lot better. Just clean the Vaseline off. You can get the focus. Yep, they're not too bad at all. The next thing to do is to select the bottle that we're going to use. And these are quite a good bottle because they're clear and you can see how much water is left in them. And if you put them, we have found that if you put them on the southern side of a tree where they don't get a lot of sunlight, uh, they don't actually get a lot of um, green algae build up in them. So the way you put the hole in these is, it's got a bit of water in it, is on the top there you can see, see if I can get the light right, see there's a little moulding mark in the centre. I've got a set of these step drills, so don't be tempted to hold this in your hand. So you drill a hole through it, and then you might get plastic on the inside, so just kind of trim that off. But try not to make too much of a chamfer, because you don't want the um, O-ring to miss that chamfer. And then this will come through from this side. You can see the O-ring's going to seal on that face there. Then you put your nut in there to make sure it starts nice and straight. There we go. Just get your spanner and just nip that up. It shouldn't need to be too tight because you're only compressing that O-ring in there. So just, I think that'll work. Just let me go and get some water and we'll test it. Right, I've got some water in that bottle. So screw that on there. You just turn that around a little bit. So then you can see it's filling up. In there it's filling up all right. You can reorientate this in a minute, that, that's no drama. And then once the float gets to the top, it stops. What I did was, I did put a tiny pinhole on the top just to allow the pressure to equalize. Because this, is, this isn't pressure dependent, this is more a case of um, it's got a float valve in it. So the little possums come along and they have a drink. And every time they knock that float or every time they drink the water, it uh, fills itself back up again. You can just gently reorientate that. There we go. I'll just take that cap off and check that nut's still tight. So now you have to work out how you're going to mount your bottle onto something that you can lift off easily without having to do too much mucking around so that you can fill this back up and screw the cap back on and put it back in its holder. So let's have a look at how we do that because it will be dependent on the shape of your bottle. Rightio, I've cut this piece of pine to the right length. It's about kind of that long. That's about as long as you need it. You just need a little bit at the end that you can attach a screw through. And then down here, you have to have a, enough there to make a little collar to sit around the bottle. I'll show you what I mean in a second. I've cut that piece to size, and I'm going to cut this center piece here out now for the bottle to drop into. So I'll do that and I'll show you what I mean. It'll, it'll become clearer once it's done. If you're sizing the hole saw, if that fits over there like that, that's pretty good. So once that's mounted on there, you want the bottle to be able to sit in there like that. So it just drops in there like that. I'll show you in a second how this all goes together. How you choose to attach this is entirely dependent upon the thickness of the wood and how you prefer to do it. If you've, if you've got much in the way of uh, woodworking tools, you could probably drill it and screw it. But I'm just going to use some PVA glue and some um, galvanized nails. So turn that over and mark that so you've got your width. Now this is the back. It's a good idea to write it on there so that you don't get mixed up later. So I've drawn that line there. And you turn that over and you mark it again just so you know where to put the glue. That's really all that second line is for. 
So I put a little bit of glue on there, if it'll come out, here we go. Right, so I've clamped that in the vise and knocked those nails in. Just wipe that little smear of glue across there. This will be mounted on the tree and that will sort of drop in there like that. That cutout on the front there has to be wide enough for that to fit through so you can drop it down like that. Once again, I can't stress enough how you mount your bottle to your plate that you're going to mount to the tree depends entirely upon the shape and style and size of your bottle. We find these ones are pretty good. These are a rectangular bottle and that places the neck of the bottle actually very close to the back so it's quite easy to get it to sit fairly flush, fairly flat against the, the board here. And then I'll put hoop steel around here. I'll show you what hoop steel is in a second. And that's what we find works really well. This is quite an easy way and um, quite a, well, as you can see, I've basically made this from scrap wood that I had in my pile. So that's even been routed for some cabinetry I was making. This is perforated hoop steel. Um, you buy this at Bunnings in a roll. I'm not sure how much it is. I use it quite a bit, so it's okay for me to buy a roll. There's probably other ways of doing this. You could probably cut just a piece of tin and then just a couple of nails would, would do the same job. It doesn't need to be this. I'm just using this because I've got plenty of it and it's already got the holes in it. The next thing I do is work out roughly where the hoop steel is going to go. And if you put it close to the top, it's easier to get the bottle in and out. If you put it down here, then the angle to come in is too tight. So I put it up about there. See, it's kind of just below. In fact, we'll put it level with the ridge on that bottle. And once again, how you mount your bottle will depend entirely upon your actual bottle itself. When you choose your screws to attach this with, you have to make sure that the screw isn't long enough to go through the wood. Otherwise it might puncture the um, plastic bottle on, the, on, on this side here. You don't want to do it up too tight or it'll split, it might split the wood. So now you lay this back over. Place your bottle in like that. So make sure that it drops down into there. Make sure it drops down into there. And then you just kind of kink this around. So you go, okay, okay, there, and about there, and about there, and about there. And then you get it right, right around to here. Now you want it fairly loose. That's probably a, a tad tight. Well, what I might do is, I'll just bring that back a wee bit to about there. Okay, so now that I can, I can look at that, and that end is going to line up with that edge there. So what we'll do is, just get rid of all those sharp edges. Now I'll find another screw that's the right length. So now I've turned that over to put this screw in up here, making sure that I don't catch that on the bench and break that. Whoops, here we go, hang on. It's putting up a fight. You can imagine that screwed to the tree and how you do that depends entirely upon you if you want to drill a hole through there and then put a nail through it so that you can lift it on and off if you want but I find that once if this is designed properly and the bottle goes in and out nice and easily this shouldn't need to come off the tree so I normally just put like a big long coach screw or a, um, a wood like a long stainless wood screw into the tree and then once that's attached to the tree you can you can picture that's screwed to the tree and then that just drops in like that. And there you go. It's as simple as that. And then that just lifts out. You fill it up. And put it back in. The key points to remember are fitting this. That's fairly easy to do. You can use a 10 millimeter stainless nut or if you can get a 1 8 BSP and what BSP is is it's British Standard Pipe it's a um, type of plumbing 
uh, thread. It's a, actually pretty standard of thread for plumbing fittings and, and pneumatic fittings. But like I said, I didn't have any of that, so I just forced a 10 mil nut on there. And it's gotta be stainless, otherwise it'll rust, obviously. And that just screws on there. And then you can orientate that. You can get a little bit of movement out of that to orientate that. Make sure that that fits, that that actually fits through there. So that when you drop it in, it drops in like that. So that's, that's, this is what we use to give water for our little possums. A lot of these components aren't absolutely necessary um, to have the exact right thing. Obviously you have to buy the little float, little float feeder thingo. But any kind of juice bottle will do. Um, this is just scrap wood. This is called hoop steel. You buy rolls of this from Bunnings. Or Mitre 10, anywhere that's rolled. But I reckon at a pinch, you could, um, you could whack a screw in there, in the back there, wrap a bit of soft wire around it, put the wire around there, wrap it back around the screw, and then, and then cut, the, cut it off. I reckon that would work too. Because all that has to do is stop that from falling over. Because to get this out, you just lift it, and it comes out. So if that was a fairly loose piece of wire, I don't think it would matter that much. I guess if you wanted to, because that piece there that's threaded that I put the nut on is 1 8 BSP. And I guess if you really wanted to, you could cut this off with a hacksaw and use this as a nut, just do it up with a pair of pliers. But I don't want to wreck that because I don't know when that might come in handy for something else. Because that'll screw into a 20 litre drum and that's a, a normal 1 8 BSP. So, um, I hate wrecking things that I don't have to because I'm a bugger for not throwing things out and I'm sure that'll come in handy for something one day. This is a picture of one that we've had screwed to the south side of a tree for quite a few months now. I had to use quite a long screw because of the thickness of the bark. It's a chewet gum. Um, but that's one that I made uh, about a year ago, I guess, and it's worked really well. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful or helpful. If you're making a water feeder for a small animal, uh, please click like and subscribe, that really helps, and also that notification bell. Okay, bye for now.